Well, all right, guys, welcome back to Bucket Ponds. Uh, I am your wonderful host, and I am proud to be here with another episode of our show. So today we are going to look at the Sealed Moss Polydarium one year after it was built. And uh, this video was requested by you guys on YouTube, uh, specifically Devonta. And I'd just like to say thank you for your suggestion and your request. I kind of forgot that this tank was one year old. Uh, big thank you to our patrons. That's right. Uh, Clay Wise, Swan C, Jay, and Jeff K. I appreciate it, you guys. Your support means the world to me. If you'd like to join them and get a shout out in the videos, you can check out our Patreon in the description. So it looks amazing, especially with the lights off and our flashlight in hand. We can see all the beautiful green in here. A nice emerald striking green. And it looks really good compared to the lava rock in the bottom of the jar. Uh, we have an unusual plant here that has taken over the foreground, and I think it's bladderwort, but I'm starting to doubt that at this point. It has reached up out of the water, and it's now growing on the glass, which is very interesting. Might be something we could make use of in the future. But uh, with the lights on, this project will look a little bit brown. Uh, please keep in mind that this jar was too large to film in my current uh, filming area. So I had to get this table out and kind of rig up something over here in the corner of the fish room. And already I can see that our gloves, uh, we need to get black gloves as these blue ones are just too reflective in the tank. Uh, lighting is a challenge with these videos. But the jar is beautiful. And though it may look a bit brown, that's actually a hair-like appendage that the moss is growing on its tissue. It's not mold or fungus, it's part of the moss. I'm not sure what purpose it serves. But this jar has been sitting on my windowsill for a full year, and we need to wipe it down a little bit. And there we go. So I'm very proud of this project. After an entire year, it still looks beautiful. Now, Devonta, if you were asking about the other polydarium that we built almost four years ago, uh, I could do an update on that tank uh, in the near future as well. But this project was looking so good, and yeah, it's a very successful. So I wanted to show this one, and I assume that you were talking about this tank. But as it is, I see a few things that we can change in our next polydarium build, a few ways we can improve our method and to make a better sealed polydarium. I have another pickle jar, <laughs> and I'm ready to build another one. Now, I should mention that our projects are not being reset or dumped out or anything. Uh, when I build a new project, I will, of course, build it alongside this one, and we will compare all three of them one day in the future. But that build will be in 2024, probably sometime in January, for our third polydarium build. This is a sealed project. This is considered an ecosphere or a biosphere or a self-sustaining closed ecosystem. Um, it has not been opened in an entire year. No air or water has gone in or out. And I'm aware that, uh, you know, people can lie about this, but I have no reason to. I'm not going to get any bonus points or anything. And uh, the only way I could think to, like, show you guys the jar being permanently sealed on camera would be to maybe super glue it. Uh, but then I worry about, uh, you know, like, gases or, or, you know, whatever scent comes off of super glue. I don't want that to, like, fill the aquarium and somehow poison everything. Yeah. I could be just being paranoid, but uh, in my experience, just closing the lid on a nice food quality jar like this is enough to keep it airtight. And in this project, um, this plant, I thought it was bladderwort, but it vaguely resembles algae in some ways. And I'm not quite sure what it is, but it is growing up along the glass, and I think that's really cool. We found this in one of the pool ponds outside, and I think that maybe we might be able to use this plant or algae in the future to build a really cool background for an aquarium. Imagine the background of the glass is alive and it's green and it's producing oxygen. That'd be really cool. Uh, but I have big plans for our next polydarium. I can see here that our island portion is just too small. It's too short. Our water is not very deep because our island is not very tall. And with less water, uh, you have less life. You, you can support aquatic life in particular. Uh, recently, over the course of this last year, we have built a series of ecospheres, and we have learned that it's best to have about 50% uh, open air in your project, and then, you know, 50% water, or in this case, a 
mixture of water and rock. Um, also, I want to build a better island, as this island is uh, really just piled up stone, lava rock. Uh, so I want to build a better polydarium. I want to have some soil up top, maybe some sand. Uh, I have big ideas. The main problem we have is getting that soil or sand to stay up, you know, and not fill up the water portion. And so I think I might use some biodegradable screen, non-biodegradable is very important, some uh, non-biodegradable uh, screen mesh, possibly glued inside of the jar to form a divider in the middle, uh, lengthwise. But so far, we do have a cool planarian in here, and I do consider them pets at this point. Uh, we also have a bladder snail, a healthy bladder snail, and quite a few ostracods. Now, I didn't see any other life forms in here, but that doesn't mean that they are not present. Um, you know, there is water all among those stones, and uh, that planarian in particular was escaping into the stone, fleeing the flashlight. Looks like our bladder snail might be doing the same. And that would make sense, as they've never encountered a direct light like this, and they were probably born in this jar. So their experiences and their their lives are a bit different than, you know, their brothers and sisters that were uh, raised in a traditional aquarium. But it's very nice to see a bladder snail in here. Even in our three-year update on our first polydarium, we had bladder snails. And, of course, ostracods, so that gives you a good idea of what species can survive in a closed project. One thing I really like about these closed aquariums, these closed polydariums, no food or water goes in or out, no oxygen is exchanged. It's all purely uh, self-sustaining. And that means that I don't have to do any maintenance. It's all the wonderful aspects of having a tiny aquarium without any of the work <laughs> other than the initial setup. And, you know, if you're living a busy life, you don't have time to uh, do water changes and constantly feed everything and, and do all the stuff that you have to do. So I think that these jars are like a whole different hobby, a whole different type of thing, you know. And I, I love big planted tanks, the big beautiful tanks that we see on the internet. But that's just not what we do. You know, we build nice planted jars and we're constantly improving. That's something I'm very proud of with Bucket Ponds. Uh, every step of the way, we are getting better. We might make a mistake, we might stumble, but we're steadily climbing uphill. And I see that you guys are starting to feel that same way. You know, the channel is starting to grow. And uh, back in the day when we had like 16 subscribers, man, it was disheartening. You know, it's like I'd worked so hard to put out a really low quality video and nobody would watch it, except for a few of you diehard fans. And uh, I think that's so cool. You know, I want to shout you guys out like every video, but the other people, they're probably get annoyed. But I am very, very happy with this project. And we're going to use everything that we learned here. You know, in our first polydarium, we just wanted to make one that would work. We wanted a planted polydarium that would support small animals. And in this project, we wanted a planted polydarium that would support small animals, but also look nice. We wanted it to be cool to look at. And uh, so in our next project, I expect it to evolve even further. We want more animals in a deeper water situation with a better island. And of course, we want it to be successful. We want them to survive. Also, I want to incorporate isopods. Maybe isopods, but definitely springtails and other land-dwelling creatures in the land portion. So for our next polydarium, we will have a better island. Uh, with some soil and uh, some more organic material. I think that'll be really cool. It's all just uh, a matter of experience, you guys. You know, you just got to keep trying. Never give up. Always, you know, pursue your hobbies and have fun. You know, even without the channel, I'd still be here making tanks like this and having fun. But I'm so happy to share them with you. And uh, just reading your comments and stuff, it just makes my day. You know, I go in to work with a big smile on my face, and I have a good day. So thank you for that. I hope that you have a great time. I hope that your holiday season was a lot of fun, and you had uh, time with your family and everything that you wanted to do. I did talk over the intro, and I will probably talk over the outro as well. I uh, hope you guys are okay with the audio. Uh, I know the video didn't have the best lighting and whatnot, but we're constantly improving, and we're always having fun. 
So this is Bucket Ponds. I make pretty much weekly videos. Uh, once a month we make a podcast where we just sit out in the Swamp Shack and talk. And then uh, other times, you know, we just make build videos and updates and stuff like that. So please like, subscribe, drop a comment, let me know what you think. Uh, feel free to request a video or offer a suggestion. I try to read every comment. But big thank you to our patrons. If you would like to join them, check out our Patreon. And otherwise, guys, I will see you in 2024. Have a great day. Have a great year. Yeah.